welcome to Broadleaf's second B2B fall webinar series as we're joined with Avalara today to talk about managing the complexities of sales tax. I'm Brad Buell with Broadleaf and I'm joined today by Jennifer Myers, Broadleaf's partner sales manager at Avalara. Jennifer's background includes over a decade of software and hardware automation across a wide range of businesses. It's always great to have business partners like Avalara who not only know their stuff, but are also fun to work with. Jennifer, over to you. Hey, thanks, Brad, and, and welcome, everybody. Thanks so much for taking the time this morning to join us. Um, just real quick as far as what we're going to cover, um, we're going to go over some of the complexities that manufacturers and other customers have when it comes to sales tax and also discuss some of the solutions that are available to you and how to manage the complexities of sales tax with Avalara and Broadleaf. All right, let's go ahead and get started. customers every day and when we talk with manufacturers specifically um, there are a lot of challenges that they face um, and not only just manufacturers but really all customers across the board um, big question which states should I collect in um, do you have any nexus triggers and do you know where you're supposed to be collecting what do I collect on do you know if we're going to be charging sales tax is fully taxable or if there's some variable taxability concerns, um, how do you know how to and what to collect on? And thirdly, how do I ensure that what I'm collecting is correct? Um, you have to make sure that, that with the government when you're collecting sales tax that it is accurate. So being able to maintain the accuracy with the system that you have can be quite challenging. And then what if I get audited? Um, think about the time that's spent when it comes to audits and how much time that takes. And do you have all of the correct information for that auditor? Um, oftentimes auditors, when they come to your office, they're looking for low-hanging fruit. Um, so you want to make sure that if you're audited that you have all your ducks in the row, right? It can be a pretty arduous process. So as any good manufacturer or customer knows, really having a repeatable, consistent process, it just enables a greater quality control and quality control helps ensure compliance. So let's review um, real quick again the following areas where sales tax can pose those challenges to manufacturers and, and distributors and how they would benefit from a quality control process that reduces costs and risk and improves performance. Um, taking a look at sales tax and the state budgets um, I like to show this slide because it really breaks down um, our, our taxes and what we pay our government. And you can see that sales tax makes up the biggest chunk of state revenues. So what's going on with our states and why, why is this important? Um, as you know, the states have been recovering from the most recent recession and they're still focusing on sales tax. So the states have services and programs to deliver to their citizens, and those programs are paid through sales tax collection. So as a business, you carry the responsibility of collecting and remitting those taxes. You're really, you're an unpaid revenue agent for the state, right? It doesn't make you any money, and it's a pass-through activity that you have to do. And as you focus on your own business's growth, the states are taking action to recapture that lost revenue. For example, California this last year uh, announced that they're hiring 100 additional auditors over the next three years. Idaho hired 48 auditors that are now full-time staff. So increasing the number of auditors is a great move to the states. Why? Because they know they can find lost revenue when they audit businesses. And audits really aren't a question of if anymore, it's really a question of when. And we, we talk to customers all the time. In fact, last week talked to two customers that had gone through audits and it was quite painful. They didn't have a process in place, um, not, not an automated process. So, so what do you do? One of the first things you need to do is understand your nexus requirements and know where you're required to collect. So, and I get this question a lot, what is nexus? And nexus is pretty clearly defined. It really is a connection between the state and a business or a physical presence. And having nexus really just allows the state um, to compel an out-of-state company
choosing to register and collect sales or use tax. So the company, the out-of-state company must have a physical presence of some sort, and that de definition is somewhat changing. And let's take a look at that. So these are the questions that you can ask yourself. Do you have people that travel in the state or out of the state that you're currently in? What about contract labor? Do you have any 1099s that you, that you work with? Um, do you have any company representatives in the various states um, that you're operating in? What about personal property? Do you own or lease any, any real or personal property in the state? What about promoting your products and services? Um, some states have a requirement when it comes to advertising. Um, if you're advertising, say, in a phone book, that might actually trigger Nexus. So you want to make sure you're clear on that. And then, and do you participate any, in any trade shows or any um, exhibits in those states? Those are some real basic Nexus questions that you can um, ask yourself. And, and just know that every year this list um, continues to grow. And, and, and lastly, really, the, the nexus laws, they can be quite complex, and each state is different. There is no, um, there's no real common thread between states. So you want to make sure you review the laws in each state where you are conducting business. And if you indeed establish nexus, check the state sales tax laws so you can accurately calculate, file, and remit your sales tax liability. One other thing, too, um, when it comes to manufacturing and around Nexus, the installation of finished items or even servicing working models can create Nexus or presence in the states where your manufacturing or distribution center is not located. So each state has different determinations on what counts as installation or repair services and whether your team um, is entering the state and performing the job um, constitutes nexus and, and thus sales tax collection or documentation obligations. Um, and just to complicate the matters further, if you use a third-party vendor to handle the repairs or installation of your product, you may have created a condition um, that causes nexus. So keeping track of, of this information for each state can really become a nightmare for, for a lot of companies. So know, knowing whether installation services and repairs create nexus and under what circumstances specifically is really critical when complying with any liability to collect and remit. All right, here's some more nexus confusion for you. So let's say we have a retailer in Wisconsin and we know he's from Wisconsin because he has cheese on his head. I think everyone there, right? They have cheese, right? So let's say he is drop shipping from Florida. And although his physical presence is only in Wisconsin, because his warehouse is shipping from Florida, he now has nexus in the state of Florida. So as we have seen whether the product itself is taxable or exempt, it's not always an easy question, but when a manufacturer drop ships, the freight handling and other delivery charges might also be taxable. And again, every state considers freight costs a little bit differently. Some only tax a portion of the cost, other tax the whole amount, and some don't tax it at all. So this research really needs to be maintained by your, your tax department on a regular basis just to ensure your business stays up to date with changes and new shipping locations as your distribution system grows. So let's talk about taxable, not taxable, and varying taxability. It's it's known that taxability laws are frequently changing. So it's really, it's recommended to review the taxability on all the products and services, especially if you've added new products or services to your offering. So without having sales and use tax experts interpreting laws for each and every taxable state and locality, as well as a sophisticated tax decision, um, tax decision-making system, it's really difficult to ensure that all taxable transactions are properly taxed. And it's super important for a seller to know what is taxable in each applicable taxing jurisdiction just to prevent tax exposure and future liability under an audit. And, and really, organizations need to have knowledge of what is not taxable in order to avoid overcharging customers' taxes and creating a, co a poor customer experience and creating risk. So the more a company can automate the tax decision-making systematically with respect to both sales and purchases, the more they can minimize or perhaps eliminate their tax exposure. And there's lots of different funky laws. We found this one the other day. We thought it was interesting. 
doing that. If you're a blind veteran in Arkansas, you're exempt from any sales and use tax. So go Arkansas. Okay, so what about physical software? Um, is physical software that you buy, is it taxable or non-taxable in California? It's taxable. If you download the same software, but it's in digital form, taxable or non-taxable? It's non-taxable. But now let's put both of those together. You have the physical software and then you've got the digital download. If you buy them together in the state of California, it's now taxable. There's all sorts of products and services just like that, where when you're combining products and services, sometimes then, you know, it's fully taxable or not taxable at all. It's real important that you know what those rules are. Um, one other thing that, that you should also know, um, just make sure that you understand the taxability exceptions. You know that rates and rules vary between all states. And this list here are really the industries that have that are known to have varying taxability rules. So if you're in any of these industries, software, hardware, digital goods, and you do any installed services, you're in the medical field, whether it's devices or equipment, food and beverage, clothing and apparel. Clothing and apparel is a big one. Um, School-related products, um, are there, there are school um, tax-free holidays, right? Those come up sometimes. There's, there's also tax-free holidays for um, disasters and storm products, things like that. Um, any dietary supplements and a ton of other industries and products, these are the main ones that are listed. So real important, you know, the taxability and the exceptions, especially if you're dealing in these industries or these um, types of, of purchases. All right, so what you're looking at here is a map of the 12,000 jurisdictions in the, in the United States. So you can see a lot of these states with all the different colors, those represent all the different taxing jurisdictions. You can also look at, so say, look up at Oregon or Idaho, and you can see that either there's no sales tax or it could be a flat tax, right? So, but if you look, if you look across the United States, um, there are so many jurisdictions to keep up with. And all of those rates, rules, and boundaries are frequently changing. So, you know, keeping up with, you know, changes in boundaries and product taxability, tax holidays, and what triggers a business requirement to collect it can really be overwhelming, can really be challenging, and it's just a, a, a resource drain for the average business. We talk to customers all the time who use zip codes to determine their sales tax rate. And while that's one way to do it, to handle your sales tax, it really creates risk. And I'll, and I'll show you why. You know, we always say that zip codes really don't mean zip when it comes to sales tax. Um, and the reason why is that zip codes were created for delivering mail, so mailing and shipping. Um, so when we apply them to sales tax, they just don't cut it, but they sure can get your letter and your package to, you know, delivered. But when it comes to sales tax, it doesn't get granular enough. And let's go ahead and I'm drilling down. You can see the variety of zip codes here. On average, each zip code in the United States has three different sales tax rates. On average, this is just in Colorado. So if you look here at Greenwood Village, you can see that there are three different taxing jurisdictions in 80111. You've got the orange at 7.72, you've got a light green at 6.85, you've got a dark green at 4.35. And then you look right in the middle, there's a little sliver of orange there, right, right in the middle of the 4.35. So how do you know if you're just using um, zip codes for your sales tax, how do you know that you're going to be accurate? And again, this is just one example. So, and then when we drill down even further into the zip code, you can see all of the special taxes that have to be applied and collected and remitted to the state and the special jurisdiction. Typically, your, your zip code rates are not going to calculate that for you. So really using uh, zip codes, it's, it's risky and it's inaccurate. I'm going to drill down one more time. We're going into Colorado, specifically into
to Denver. And again, this is just another example. And we're kind of picking on Colorado here, but let's take a look. And this is one zip code, right? You've got 7450 Layden Street. The total sales tax rate is 0.0925. And then you can see all the special taxing jurisdictions um, underneath that and where you need to, uh, what you need to collect and where you need to remit it to. In that same zip code, we're going right down the road, less than a block, um, over on Locust Street, and the total sales tax rate is 0.0475. So again, if you're using zip codes, you're not going to be accurate, um, and it really creates risk. So let's, let's uh, just recap this here. Um, so zip codes are about 70% accurate. They're based on mailing addresses, but really not the sales tax rules. If you have any uh, varying taxability that you need to consider, it's not gonna give you product taxability logic. There's no address validation to confirm that it's a deliverable or standardized address. And then also zip codes aren't going to give you the reporting and the granularity that you need in order to file promptly and accurately. Okay, so what's the solution? Here's what companies tell us all the time, what's important to them. Companies are telling us that accuracy is key. So when sales tax calculations are made, they need to be accurate. Also, self-second performance. Um, the a positive customer experience really um, is equal to self-second performance and getting a very quick rate um, at your fingertips and not having to research them. Also, managing sales tax rates and rules, it's really pretty painful. Um, again, I talk to people all the time, and probably one of the biggest things is, is when I ask people, how do you keep up with sales tax rates? They say it's really, it's a drag. They have to go, they have to research it, then they have to upload all of those changes within their system. Um, they really don't like doing it. Another area that, that customers really want, they want that real-time data accessible. Um, they want a really granular reporting, uh, reporting engine. They want to be able to access those reports very quickly. Um, they don't want to have to dig for the information. The other thing that, uh, that companies tell us is really the reduction of risk when it comes to audits is just critical. Um, audits can be very costly, they can be extremely time consuming, and so to reduce that risk, to know that when the auditor calls you, that you'll be able to pass that audit with flying colors is key. And also, you know, lastly, what we're seeing is that outsourcing sales tax is one of the biggest trends right now, just like with payroll. A lot of companies outsource their payroll. They don't have a full tax team um, in-house and if they do, they're really spending a lot of money for um, those tax experts to help them. Um, or maybe the business is smaller and they don't have a tax team. So who do you, you know, what do you do? Who do you go to? Um, companies are outsourcing their sales tax to companies like us because it's strategic and they can focus more on their business and revenue generating activities. So these are the big things that companies are telling us that are super important. And just so here's an example in Maryland, they instituted a flush tax on, on sewer bills. We thought that was fitting. Um, again, another funky rule, one of those sales tax rules that states um, have, have instituted. All right, so how can Avalara help you? What Avalara does is that we provide end-to-end -end compliance. So we're not just talking a calculation, right? We're not just talking a zip code rate. We're talking about a centralized way to manage compliance. So we have three main pillars of Avalara. We have Avatax Calc for the calculation engine with Broadleaf. And then we have Cert Capture. And Cert Capture is our standalone exempt certificate management service. And then we have our return service for filing. So Avatax is integrated to Broadleaf as well as hundreds of other ERP, accounting, or POS systems. So if you look at the column on the far left underneath Avalara Avatax, 
Um, that's what's integrated to Broadleaf. So when a customer is pl placing an order online, it, we will validate the ship from and ship to address. We'll apply any sourcing rules that are necessary, like if it's a destination address, an origin address, or maybe there's some mixed sourcing with the state, like in California, they typically have mixed sourcing rules as both destination and origin. And then we'll assign the appropriate jurisdictional tax assignment, as well as any unique product taxability at the invoice line item level. So from there, all of that data then flows into the report section to support the reconciliation and filing requirements. And the second pillar is Avalara CERT Capture. This is a fully automated way to manage your exempt certificates uh, from the automated certificate request to your exempt customer to a collection wizard where a link will be sent to the customer and the customer can actually fill out um, an exempt certificate online, and it will be sent to you, the right form will be sent to you um, with all of the right dates on it, so you know that it's accurate, it's up to date, um, and then you'll be able to store them um, on, in the cloud with Insert Capture, and also be able to retrieve them just by clicking a button. So it's a, a fully automated way to manage the exempt certificate process. And with manufacturing, exempt certificates can be big. It's also an area, you should know this, it's also an area that auditors like to look at. It's one of the first areas they look at because there's low hanging fruit there. And a lot of customers don't have a real solid way to manage those exempt certificates. So definitely pay attention to that area as well, in addition to the calculation um, and the jurisdiction assignment. Lastly is the Avalara returns. Um, we have about 80% of our customers use our returns and filing service. Um, and what happens with an Avatax is that there's a liability worksheet that's populated between the first and the fifth of the month. You go in. You click approved on that liability for that reporting period, and we'll take it from there. We will commit to preparing your return on the proper form, whether it is electronic or paper, and we will file accurately, and we guarantee we will file on time. And then in return, you have uh, a, a, an archive that's available up to seven years. Of course, you can also download what has been uh, filed and remitted for you. Um, and then lastly, there's notice management offered with our return service. And what that is, is if a state has a question about one of your returns, we will answer and close out that query on your behalf. So, who we are. Um, you know, we started this business about 10 years ago, and we knew that the problem that we were solving um, wasn't isolated to one company. We knew that if this one company that we worked with, and it was a very large company, um, if we solved their sales tax problem, we knew that many, many other uh, companies also have sales tax issues. So we're really, we are a technology team that specializes in sales tax. And when we took sales tax from being on-premise, and that was really kind of the old way, the archaic way of managing sales tax was having a, a um, server on-site, software that you had, had to manage in-house. We knew that when we put it in the cloud and we started managing it, it for our customers, that we were really on to something big. And we truly, 10 years ago, revolutionized the way companies look at sales tax. We knew that it is extremely costly to businesses of all sizes, whether it's you know your small mom and pop to your medium to your large enterprise customers, that managing compliance is extremely costly. So when we talk about sales tax, you know, really from the calculation to the 1099 to the exempt certificates, um, property tax, filing, remitting, we know that that is a huge drain on customers, and we were onto something big. So this is a, a customer profile, it's a broadly customer. We're, we are really proud to present at Gantz, and they are a manufacturer of giftware, home decor items, toys, and they also sell goods and services um, through their website. 
um, with games and memberships and also an affiliated products to youth markets. So when they um, came to us, they didn't have a way to manage sales tax well. It was extremely costly. Um, they said it was tedious. It was very difficult to maintain, and they had to host it on site. So it was really, you know, it was tough to justify um, that large expense for a product that really didn't do exactly what it needed. So what they said about us, you know, we are a cloud-based solution. What they don't have to do, and they were really happy to give up, they were happy to give up the maintenance of sales tax. It is a huge burden um, on their it was a huge burden on their system administrator. So um, the feedback we got from the implementation was that it was very smooth um, and that we were able to really seamlessly fit in with their um, entire business process. And we really didn't change the way they did business. So what it resulted in for them was really being able to, to spend more time and energy on their business and not having to manage um, sales tax or maintain that. So really, you know, having a sales tax solution automated and really one that takes care of itself was just one less thing that they had to worry about. So we're real happy to, to, share, uh, to share their story with all of you. All right, so the partnership that we have with, with Broadleaf um, and we are very, very proud of our, of our partnership. Um, we have a certified pre-built connector been built by Broadleaf that automates everything from the rates and rules that we touched on today to the returns process. So it's pretty much plug and play. So what we can do is determine the correct rate, rule, and boundary, and we can validate the ship to and ship from address. We'll apply product taxability and then provide out-of-the-box reporting for monthly reconciliation and audit defense. You know, the bottom line really is that customers don't want to manage and maintain sales tax compliance themselves. And, and sure, could you continue managing it manually on your own? Sure you could. But why would you want to when there's already a pre-built connector that will do it for you? The reason that you don't want to do it in-house and handle it yourself is that it really just creates risk, right? The other thing is that it just takes time away from your business. And again, you can continue to do it manually, but really why would you want to when we have such a strong partnership and a stable connector with Broadly? It really makes sales tax less taxing and more relaxing for you. All right, so we have time for questions. And I'm also going to put up, there's my uh, contact information. You can take that down as well. Thank you, Jennifer, for the presentation. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. We appreciate your time. Um, thank you, Jennifer, and thank you to the Avalara team for being such a great partner to Broadleaf and for making sales tax less taxing. We appreciate it.